Welcome back to the second issue we are looking at today. The Edo State election is drawing near, and the bickering between the two major contenders still stand. This time, the All Progressive Congress APC has alleged plans by Governor Godwin Obaseki and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to arrest its leaders over stage managed kidnappings and then blame its members for the disappearances. The PDP responded, saying the allegation is false. But in a turn of events, the Oba of Bini had said he would invite all the governorship candidates participating in the upcoming election in the state to his palace to sign a peace pact. Joining us to discuss this is Chris Nehikari, the PDP Publicity Secretary. Good evening, Mr. Chris Nehikari. Good evening. Thank you for having me. And to also join us to give us another perspective to this conversation is the former Attorney General of Edo State, Henry Idahagbon. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thanks for having me, too. Yeah, let me start with you. Uh, uh, what do you mean that uh, PDP is trying to stage manage that kind of serious accusation? Well, you know... Uh, Governor Obaseki is like a drowning man, like a man drowning in the barbage in Lagos. Uh, when you are drowning, you cling to straw and you cling to anything available uh, uh, inside. Um, are the leaders of our information that is planning to state manage the kidnapping of some of their members and then blame it on the uh, APC members in order to arrest some very prominent members that he knows has huge followership and that we do a lot of uh, canvassing and uh, the necessary logistics to ensure that the elections are won. We are aware of this information and we have to go to town because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Uh, we know that since this uh, electionary process started, uh, Governor Obaseki once boasted that is the only one that has immunity in the state. And because of his immunity, he has the privilege of doing whatever he likes, which includes violence. Because the immunity must be looked at from the perspective of criminality. As uh, by virtue of his immunity, if he com com commits criminal act, he cannot be arrested at least while he's in office. Okay. Then, then secondly, just let me finish with this second point. You will recall that on the day the 17 members of the APC uh, went to the House of Assembly and got themselves inaugurated, the governor himself led a protest of so many talks, out of which uh, uh, seven of them were arrested with uh, guns, and they've been arraigned in court as we speak, they're in prison custody. Not one APC member has been found so far with any incriminating arms. Okay. Because we are a peaceful party, we have a peaceful candidate, a man of God, a pastor of the Most High, okay. and we are prepared for this election devoid of violence. Okay, thank you, And Mr. let me take Adabon. this opportunity you to encourage our people in the state not to succumb to any violent act that they may be sent by any of the political parties. Okay, thank you so much. I, I think I like your last statement by any political party. Yes. Mr. Neikari, uh, yes, uh, let's also listen to Mr. Chris Neikari. And um, please, let's also allow him express, but I think it was also... Let's have your take. Let me not preempt what you have to say. Thank you very much. I listened to my brother speak just now. And uh, I think, first of all, I have to correct him that he should stop uh, this narrative of the governor said he has immunity. The governor does have immunity, and the governor did say only himself and the deputy governor have immunity in the state. And as such, anybody that has information on any criminal, no matter how highly placed that criminal or that person, actually politicians, because of the what has been going on, the person can come and report to the police and the person will be dealt with. When he talked about having immunity, it was in, in the sense of warning and telling people that. Nobody is above the law in this state. And when APC comes to this narrative of uh, the governor is planning to kidnap, it's, it's funny because first and foremost, if he has the immunity, he wants to kidnap. Are, you, are they telling us the governor wants to go and do the kidnapping himself? I'm glad he mentioned that some people were arrested with arms at the House of Assembly. 
The governor has immunity. Those people were with the governor according to his own narrative just now, but they were still arrested. So what does that tell you? So I think uh, the, their narratives are becoming very stale. They've run out of content for television and newspapers, and they come up with all these sort of stories, try to scare and frighten Edo people not to come out on election day. Their agenda is to frighten Edo people, to scare them not to come out on election day, so our election should be postponed because they know that they have been defeated in all 18 local governments with the opinion poll they carried out themselves, where the Edo people told them directly that they have no chance in this election. So they now switch to option two, which is a cause, cause confusion, create panic, create fear in the minds of Edo people. And that is why if you notice, whenever we speak at our rallies, at our functions, we tell Edo people and encourage them that they should not be scared. They should come out on that day. That okay. the Nigerian police- Nekari, let, me stay, let me stay with you. Let me stay with you before I go back to Mr. Idagbon. Uh, Naikari, let me stay with you before I go back to Mr. Idagbo, just to stay on issues so that our viewers don't just see exchange of words, but they will go home with good information. You mentioned two issues here, and uh, according to Mr. Idagbo, he felt this is a point for people to believe the accusation that some men were arrested with guns, and these are men that were with the governor. Can you explain that, number one? Then number two, you also mentioned the issue of Opinion poll shows that the governor has defeated his opponent in all the 18 local government. Can you expatiate or expatiate on these two issues? Yes, first and foremost, he is the one that came with the narrative that people were arrested with the governor at the House of Assembly. I don't think that is true. It's a lie. But it's the narrative they are selling. If people were caught with guns and I police custody, I'm saying that they were not with the governor and they're not the governor's people. How do we know who they belong to? They are the ones selling that narrative. I'm just trying to say, he talks about governor's uh, 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 immunity. At the same time, people are being arrested that are with the governor. Does it, does it, it doesn't add up. So I'm just going to leave him and leave APC on okay. that narrative because it's a false narrative which they are selling to the public. On the other hand, they commissioned a group from Lagos, sponsored by their godfather, Bola Tinubu, to come and do an opinion poll in Edo. The report of the opinion poll suggested very much that they are losing woefully. And that is why now, all the funding they were expecting and they thought they would get, they've always funding and been stopped. And then that is when they now move to their option two, which is to cause confusion, cause mayhem, to make a dosage ungovernable so that there can be a postponement or, or a postponement of the election. Okay. And that is why we are telling people, do not be frightened. The election must hold on the 19th. So okay. no matter the amount of violence they try to orchestrate, we must not fear. We must come out on the 19th to vote Thank so you. that the result of that voting will shut these people up definitely. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Idagwa, I'm not lucky to have seen the opinion poll that were being mentioned, but let me have your own take. Have you seen the opinion poll? And is it true that uh, my, your candidate... Let, friend, me, let me speak to my Idagwa. Friend, is it not funny? Is it not funny that the publicity secretary of PDP is telling you on national television that we commissioned the an opinion poll. Is it not funny? It is funny. If they commissioned an opinion poll, they should let the Nigerian people know. To the best of my knowledge, and I am one of the leaders of the party in Edo State, we did not commission any opinion poll. They are always looking for every uh, means to bring in Senator Bola Tinubu, the Jakaban himself, into the Edo narrative. Senator Tinubu is not involved. And he's talking about we are not getting funding. How is, uh, where is the source of information of Neikari? We know you people have funding. The government has been stealing money for the past four years. Excuse and of me. course, you have your Excuse me, sir. bank in Port Harcourt. So me, you sir. have a lot of money. But you, you do not know our sources of funds. And you do not know the extent of the funds that we have. And I'm not going to engage you on that. And on why you don't television. want to engage him on that? Can you please engage me? How do you mean that the governor has been stealing money? That's a very strong allegation. Listen, uh, listen, I, I, have, I have been involved in governance in those state before Obaseki became governor. And what does that mean? I worked with Obaseki for six years in government. And you should credit me with having a modicum knowledge of how government is run in those state. If Obaseki thinks my statement is uh, defamatory, we will meet in court. I am not afraid to meet him in court. Okay. So, 
But let me let me say clearly that the narrative of uh, uh, Neikari clearly shows that they do not have anything to tell the Nigerian public for him to know the internal workings of the APC and to now jettison his job as spokesman for the PDP to now be speaking for the APC. As for the elections, it, it, it can remain delusional to think that they have won the entire 18 local government. By the 20th of September, I enjoin you to call both of us again. I can assure you by 20th of September, Neikare will be sedated and he will be sleeping in his house. He will not be in a position to answer telephone call. You call me and I will be here to speak to you on the 20th of September. Okay. And probably I should put it on record that you always uh, grant our request. But on this issue, I I'm just worried. Now we are having some kind of scary rhetorics from both sides to the extent yeah. that the Oba of Benin, which tells us that uh, there is something really, really serious for the Oba of Benin to planning to call all parties to sign a peace pact. Do we have to get to this? And I hope that this intervention will put a stop to the drum of violence. Yeah, I'm still talking to you, Mr. Ida Agbon. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. You see, um, it's unfortunate we got to this level. I've been since the beginning of this republic in 1998, 99, I've been involved in every election in those states. We have never had this, this badge. But let me tell you, as bad as we believe the current government is, we are all friends, we are brothers. Neikari over there is my very good friend, is my brother of so many years standing. We are not ready to kill ourselves. We want to live after this election. And the Oba of Benin represents the moral, spiritual, and cultural authority for all Edo people, not even Benin, for all Edo people, either in Edo state, in Nigeria, or in the diaspora. So when the Oba speaks on the issue, that will be the final sale. After the Oba speaks, nobody will then go against the advice of our Oba. And if you do, there are cultural, there are moral consequences that will definitely follow. So I'm happy that our real father has intervened, and I believe this intervention will douse the tension. We will have a peaceful election of September 19. We will win by the grace of God Almighty, and we celebrate. My brother will lose, but he and I will celebrate our love with okay. thereafter. Okay, let's wait till 19. So let me go back. Uh, we have uh, we have Chris on the line now. Chris, um, I know you're itching to react to some of the things he said. And in addition to your reaction, I also want to get your perspective on the other of Bini's uh, planned intervention. Yeah, um, I, I lost you lost me for a bit, but from from what I uh, for what I could gather, my brother was talking about. Uh, I'm not in the position to speak for their party, to tell you what's happening within their party. But isn't it amazing that he can tell you what the government is planning, what the government is thinking, but then I cannot tell you what people <laughs> from their party tell us. You see, they have a lot of moves, a lot of a lot of moves in their party that give us this information. They are the ones that brought the reports of the poll to us. He's aware. And it's, have you seen anyone going to an election that does not conduct opinion poll to know what the polls of the people that want to go? We want uh, to vote for them is aware, but the result, the, re the report of that uh, opinion poll was so bad that they are now denying it. But I will just leave that because he wouldn't agree, he would accept it. But we all know that is well, the truth. For the record, but on I the am case not of aware. the other, for the record, I think I uh, on that matter, I will agree with my brother hundred percent. What is going on now is on a do like. We have never had it so bad for people to be so desperate to want to grab power. I myself, Chris Nekare, I was in opposition for 12 years. I was not desperate to grab power. Our PDP was not desperate to grab power. But those in APC who are just out of power for less than three months, they are so desperate that all sorts of things are happening because they want to get back to power at all costs. But the Oba has done what the Oba has done. The Oba is revered by all Edo people, not just the Benins, but all Edo, just like my brother in the hard one said. And everybody will fall in line or should fall in line. And if they don't, there, there are consequences and there are repercussions culturally, spiritually as well. So we are looking forward to this peace pact being signed. We are looking forward to a peaceful election. We are looking forward to the stop in the rhetorics of the political parties, especially members of these parties from both sides. 
we as the party have condemned violence in every ramification. We condemn the use of, of uh, hate speech. We condemn the use, carrying of weapons. We condemn the use of weapons. And we will uh, keep encouraging our people that the only weapon they should have is the PVC. And I'm glad the Oba has spoken and everybody will fall in line, all political parties. Thank you so much, Chris and uh, Hikai. And thank you so much, uh, Barrister Henry Idahagbon. I'm so happy with the way two of you have spoken on this issue of peace. And let's hope that we can believe everything you said. And your followers, your party members, will also take a turn to know that we are all brothers. And at the end of the day, there will still be an Edo state to govern. Thank you once again, gentlemen, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. And thanks for having us. Yeah. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, I will be giving you my take on this issue. Please don't go anywhere. This is my take. Why will expect the drum of war to subside with the planned intervention of the revered monarch? Let it be known to the political class and all the state actors that soon and very soon, violence will become unpopular. Let it be known that very soon and very soon, the voice of reasoning will drown the voice of war and bloodshed. The people will choose to put on their thinking cap and bring up your record of provoking and stoking of violence and enlist you in the name and shame. Maybe I need to remind you that your rhetoric over the past is responsible for low turnout of usually 40 to 45 percent turnout of voters. Maybe I also need to remind you that we are taking record of your self-centered move by keeping your children at home or abroad and arming the youth with light weapons and, am and ammunition. A day will come where justice will be enthroned and you will all be brought to books. That time, it will not be a mere political statement, but one laced with action and immediate consequence. And that is my take tonight. Plus Politics returns on Monday with another interesting perspective. Join us again at 7 p.m. on Monday. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.